today uh, we have our guest Russ uh, going to be debating John and I about menarchism and a few other topics. Yeah. And I guess we'll take over uh, the first topic right off the bat and talk about Bitcoin. That's an interest of yours, right? Talk yes. about and money. Bitcoin and money. Yeah. So, <clears throat> is it to my understanding you have been trying to for some time trying to be convinced whether it has a future or if it's going to go anywhere or if it's worthless? Okay, so no, my, my problem is that I'm I'm convinced it's never going to be money. And it's never going to be money because there's no actual value to it because it's a currency. It's called a cryptocurrency and it's going to stay a currency to the end of time for all time. So one day, if it's backed up by a real money, like gold and silver or another precious metal, or you could be backed up by oil. I mean, that would work too. It would work. It works just fine. Can you define what is money and the difference between currency and money? Well, currency is the medium, is like the medium of exchange of money. So it's like, I, I, I give, I, like, like, a gold coin would be a currency, but the, the money itself is the gold, right? That makes sense to you? So if it's a tangible thing, yeah. then it could be money. Yeah, like I could give you <coughs> this like a, a bu- like if I gave you like a rock of gold, that should be, that should be like money, but it, it, it wouldn't be a currency because there's like nothing about it. It's just like, it's just a, like a lump of gold. Well, I think we can uh, win this debate on our side because you can print Bitcoin. Did you know that? Yeah, I know. The Federal Reserve, so the Federal Reserve so does the same thing. You can print it and you can put the QR code on it. It can have something tangible. If that was by your definition, the only the thing that separates paper. a piece of paper, right? You, right. If it's something tangible, is what you said. Not because if it's a piece of paper. You said if it was tangible, it could be money. No, no. And you can bring currency. I said, well, it's the difference between currency and money. He said, money is something tangible. That's what you said. And then I just said, well, you can print out Bitcoin to something tangible. You can print it out and have stacks of Bitcoin money. Inside so your safe. Okay. Yeah. yeah okay. So yeah. that falls in now in your definition of money, right? Well, okay. Well, would you would you would you say the Federal Reserve note is a, is money? Because I mean, the Federal Reserve prints out thousands of millions of them. Is it? What do you consider it money? John? Pie- pieces of paper. It's pieces okay, it's the same paper. thing. So you're saying you're printing out these pieces of paper that have this QR code. What's the difference between the Federal Reserve note and this piece of paper that you print out that has a QR code? On well, it? most people believe that it's money. That's the problem with the Federal Reserve note, and that it's it's backed by nothing, right? I think we all agree that. It's, back, yeah, it's, it's a piece of nothing. paper that's backed by nothing. Was the, was the, was the Bitcoin backed by nothing? Uh, Re- reputation. Yeah, reputation. Well, that's, that's the same thing. As a, that's yeah. a fiat currency. That's what, that's what it is. That's, that's how fiat currencies first started. I mean, like the, the original fiat currency was done in ancient China. And they, they had the, the, the emperor of China. He had these merchants. And they had this. The, he decreed that they can print out these pieces of paper. And it lasted for a long time. <clears> and then after a while... You know, a couple of the merchants, you know, they lost confidence in it and they're like, oh, there's doesn't have any value. And the reputation of it just plummeted. Okay. I mean, and it, was, it wasn't money because m- money isn't just reputation. It's, it has actual value. You can do something with it. Like I, I, if I gave you gold, you could take gold and you plate this entire table. And you have a gold table, you know, so, you know, sort of because it, it still would underneath the gold. But make it, paper it, airplanes. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think the draw for, for crypto is just that you have this thing that is becoming a, to quote uh, Barack Obama, a uh, Swiss bank account in your pocket. And this idea that the government can't access it. And so for people who are sympathetic to the idea that, um, you know, you should, your property should be private and you shouldn't have to sacrifice it to the government. Okay. You, the idea is, is very uh, popular and interesting. And I think this is something people want. So with gold and silver, we know the history, you know, F- Franklin Delano Roosevelt, uh, signing into law, you got to hand over your gold, and then we're going to hand you back. This is th- it's too easy to get. It's too yeah, easy to take. Really. I mean, not most people didn't give up their gold. It's like, like how they talked about in Pittsburgh. It was like, oh, we well, were signing this law, we had to turn in like the bump stocks or whatever, and nobody did. It's like New Zealand is like, okay, we're making a law that says you turn in your guns. Nobody did. Only nobody turned people. in their gold. Not many people turned in their gold. I mean, think how much gold existed back then. I mean, that's how the doc- Jamie pull that shit up. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even believe you did that. That's, that was. Like, <laughs> But it's like, I mean, think, think about how much gold and silver existed in the country at that time. I mean, the, the, the government didn't get that much gold and silver. I'm not quite sure how much they got, but, you know, there's a threat and there's a lot of stuff that the government did that people didn't think that they actually could be able to get away with, like locking up agents and cages. So, you know, if they had that kind of power of force behind them to do something like that, I think they would have that kind of power and force to kind of threaten a lot of people to take away their gold and precious metals. Well, I mean, uh, <clears throat> yeah, they did get a lot of power, but... That was during World War II. And, but, you know, when there's problems like that, we people usually give more leeway when it comes to certain things. Because they're like, okay, well, you know, it's for the war effort, yada, yada, yada. We got to protect the country. Is it realistic? 
Uh, probably not, but I he think, still did it. I think this brings us back, though, to the central issue that we're discussing in the in the podcast, though, is that um, the government can do things vis-a-vis money that regular people can't do. So with crypto, it's this effort that it's decentralized, uh, it's immutable. You can't. The government doesn't control it. Doesn't have its hands all over it. Okay. And with money, it's been so heavily intertwined with government that people have this conception that only the government can can create money and uh, can print money and currency, if you will. Yeah, they, they can print currency. They can't print money. Like 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 this was saying. Like I, I brought Cal silver. Like this is a a case full of silver coins. Like the government can't create. Well, you can create gold and silver, technically. We, we've created gold, but it will kill you because it's like it's so irradiated and stuff like that. I don't know, I don't know the actual science behind it, but we, we've actually sort of created gold, but you can't use it because you'll die. Like, was that in China or something? I, I think it was something in America. Like I can't remember. I can't remember where it was exactly, but we, we actually sort of did that. I mean, I've tried mining for gold on the bottle of a uh, ghost logger. Okay. And, you know. <laughs> So I understand <laughs> the uh, susceptibility of like near death experiences and chugging the whole thing and scraping, you know, um, worth it. But <laughs> but I would say, uh, yeah, looking back at central planning and stuff like that, and the government's monopoly on currency. There was a guy trying to create his own currency a couple of years ago called the Liberty Dollar. Okay, government came in and says you're not allowed to compete. Threw him in jail. Mm-hmm. Stole all his precious metals. Uh, and tying this to our minarchism debate, uh, is that something that you advocate for in terms of government? monopolizing uh the creation of currency no i mean it, it's not i don't exactly i don't advocate for monopoly like i said like when i talk about you know i when i have a nation and i say government the government can just coin money and say okay this is the coin that represents the country but you can still make your own currencies like you, you have can have competing currencies, currencies. yeah for sure like if like that's what i'm saying if like how people like when people talk about when i talk about gold and silver people are like okay no one wants to carry around you know these gold coins because it gets heavy okay well it's like people can create their own paper yeah, like private banks can create their own paper bills. I'm so I'm totally fine with that. Or have it online because most of our monies are yeah, you can already do that too. online. That's, that's the thing. Like there's a company, there's companies that do that now. Like I, I use gold money, and you can have your gold on like the company you have you you have it send gold to each other. Yeah. So like my actually I don't even want to say where my gold and silver is at, but it's like it's in another country, not in America. <laughs> You've never actually seen your gold. I see my silver. It's right here. Right, but not your gold. Well, I, I sold some of my gold to buy this silver, so right. I, I have seen my gold in a sense that I'm, I'm looking at my silver. So it's based on reputation by the company Gold Money, for instance. No, but the, the, the no, but I, like the, my, the reputation for the companies that I trust them to be able to exchange my gold when I want it, and when I want it, I can get it. But the the the, the, the is the value of the metal isn't tied to the company. Is the fact that I can do things with my silver, and that gold and silver has value because it, it's it's in everything. I mean, all computers have gold and silver. I mean, I use I use silver at work when I'm when I'm I work in air conditioning. So when I put uh, copper together, I use these silver rods, and they have like uh, like fifteen uh, percent silver in it. So it's like it, it is it has some silver in it, just okay. not a lot of it. And yeah, that's the that's that's one of the things that makes it money because it has actual uses in the material world. I can do things with it. So it's like it's not valuable based on reputation. It's value that I can I can do something with it. Uh. Now, so you, you're not against people competing then against the government. No, I'm totally fine with that. So it's not a government monopoly in currency. It's government producing their own currency is yeah, what you're saying. I'm totally fine with that. Because um, the United States started off that way. You had states producing their own currency. Yeah. And then you eventually you had the federal government taxing competing currencies. And then, you know, that's where you get eventually the uh, abolition of uh, state currencies. You had uh, Lincoln's time taxing competing currencies to make sure everyone's using uh, the federal dollar their notes instead mm-hmm. uh, so how do you safeguard i guess you could say against the federal government um from reaching those heights of well you know what no one's using our currency anymore would right. it be okay if no one ever used your currency and people just kind of well, disregarded I mean, that well i mean originally it wasn't that the federal government taxed people to not use the currency i mean that's the states voted to give up their right to make their own currency when they signed the, when they joined the union so like in, in the constitution it says that the, fe- the, the federal government can coin money and that's it. And it says in article, I forgot what it was. <clears throat> Dang it. It's going to come to my head later. But is is when the powers denied to the state, says the states cannot coin money. They cannot emit bills of credit. But they did. Up to the Civil War, Lincoln was taxing competing currencies. Mm-hmm. So the states had their own currencies far past the signing of the Constitution. So it wasn't like a, a long time ago that they stopped doing it. It wasn't like maybe it was 100 years ago. Yeah, state yeah, governments. Yeah, state governments. Making yeah. their own currency. Own currency, oh, they yes. shouldn't be doing that. 
<laughs> like, I mean, they agree. <laughs> like, I mean, I'm not saying that is the, is the monopoly of the government. It's like they wrong. <laughs> but they agreed to not emit bills of credit and they agreed to not coin money. And they also so, agreed that if they didn't like it, they could separate and secede and that, you know, yeah. wasn't But then it's happened. convenient that we're talking about the Civil War at that time because then you have, of course, the federal government representing its ability to say, no, we actually have a monopoly on force and we can force you to do things, uh, you know, regarding this issue and many others that you don't want to do. So in the sense of currency, uh, they said, no, 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 like we're the main guy now. At some point it became states can make their own currencies and then it became, no, no, the federal, you know, dollars. So ultimately it comes down to a monopoly on force, the ability for them to say, Liberty Dollar guy, we've got more guns and weapons than you, so do what we say or go in this cage. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, but that's but that's my original point. If if they didn't want to, if they wanted to keep making their own money, then they should never join the union. But they, since they the states voted to join the union, they gave they gave up that right. They said, okay, well, the federal government is the only one that can coin money. The the state government can't do anything, but like the private citizens, they're allowed to coin money. Like that's they not like but not counterfeit. So they can't make coins that are part of the U.S. government, but they can make their own coins and they can make their own paper currency because that's how like, that's how I was saying how paper currencies in Western Western civilization started with private banks with goldsmiths. So I was I'm totally fine with that. But you know I guess if it was like that and the states were decided this wanted to make their, their own currency and the federal government destroyed that okay well that, that was something the federal government shouldn't have done and I unconstitutional that. yeah it is. well i mean it's, it's it's the people of the time it's the government is just people and the people can decide to okay well i'm going to do whatever i want and people we do that all the time we always decide we, we can do whatever we want i mean no one can actually stop anyone from doing anything but that constitution is just doesn't restrict them at all like well, I mean, every every instance of it it's just them steamrolling through that constitution <laughs> saying sorry buddy we're not well, doing yeah, it yeah but, but the same thing with anything i mean if if someone if i make a contract where you, you can steamroll through it anyway would your con- would you your minarca state uh still hold the same constitution that was written back then today would you make any amendments to it or any changes would you keep it as as uh what to the, the federal constitution if you right, for, for your uh, America's country, right? My, okay. Uh, would you keep the Constitution as it was written? The federal one. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I mean, I'm an Articles of Confederation guy okay. myself, personally. <laughs> well, I mean, there was, I think there, was, there was a lot of problems with the Articles of Confederation. <laughs> uh, that's why I love it. <laughs> but, well, I mean, the, the, the Articles of Confederation allowed the federal government to admit bills of credit, which I think that's a huge problem. I think that's great that uh, it didn't allow them as much power as they thought they had. Uh, I think it's great to kind of point out that George Washington actually wasn't the country's first president. Uh, there was eight other presidents before him. Uh, kind of. Yeah, no, no, yeah. and they all did one year uh, term. So they're the one who set the president of not doing it for life. So I think it's a interesting history. A lot of people don't know just to kind of throw in the face of uh, some of these people of great heights. The people think that they kind of established these kind of uh, traditions when in fact they weren't. Well, I know, but those people before Washington weren't the president of the United States because the United States didn't exist back then. I mean, the United States didn't exist under the Conf- Articles of Confederation. There was, no, you, con- there was no America. There was the United States of America. There was no United States of America. There wasn't America. There were the 13 colonies. There yes. was an attempt to create a federal government. Uh-huh. Yeah. And it didn't really work that well. I'm, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah but, but, I mean, but we did. And it, it did work for a long time. You know, there were mistakes over time. Because, you know, we're all human. Like we, eight make, years. we make mistakes. Yeah. But, but the, we, we do bad things. The guidelines that were that the states ratified the Constitution under were completely misrepresented and re- then then afterward reinterpreted by the Supreme Court. So they were, they were just said, uh, oh, no, actually, here's what it meant. It gave the, the the federal government way more power than we we told you that it did when you ratified it. But it's okay. It's still in force now. Right. They had to go in secret <laughs> uh, several years later to Pennsylvania to rewrite the whole thing to give themselves more power because it didn't allow them to have as much of federal powers over the states than they thought it could. I mean, it wasn't really in secret. I mean, I think a lot of people knew they were there. And then when the federalist papers came out it was like okay well we know these people exist we know what they did and then but i mean even when they wrote the constitution none of the states had to join it i mean nobody forced them it was to. voluntary yeah i mean they, they decided to join a union and ever ever since the original 13 every other state since then you know up till now you know they've all voluntarily decided to join the union i mean you can't really say everybody voluntarily what about you know uh the indentured servants the the slaves the women the men who didn't have land you can't say everybody you know said yeah we voluntarily want this kind of government right <laughs> well okay well well, well i think we stopped there because i don't want everyone voting for starters i think that's a horrible <laughs> idea that's just called democracy <laughs> it doesn't work that's one of the first problems with democracy you know everyone has a say in everything no 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 
Some people shouldn't be allowed to vote because they might be too stupid. They might not know what they're thinking. They, they might not know anything. They might not even be from the area. They might not even read. What would be your uh, category or, or uh, list of requirements to vote? To vote? Okay, yeah. I think it should be at least 35. Well, okay, what, for today's standards? Or for no, standards your right standards. Then? Okay, well, I think it should be... Well, 35? Did you say 35? I, I think it should be... Age least- <laughs> of consent should also be 35. <laughs> no, I think you should be at least 35 to vote. I think you have to take a test to prove you can, you can, you can have a basic understanding of English language. You should have to pay <laughs> to vote, for starters. You should be able... Actually, that's pretty much it. Should, it has to be you should own at least three rolls of silver. A silver coin. Because I mean, you have to have some kind of stake in the game. Well, and back then, you could say that the people who were allowed to vote are people who have property because they're yeah, the one paying taxes I, I'm on okay it. With that. Right. I think. Um, I think you, should, you also another requirement. You should have a job to vote. If you if you don't have a job, you can't vote. <laughs> I feel like that's something we should all be able to agree on. If you don't have a job, because I mean, if I can't trust you to hold the job, I probably should. I, I can't trust you to vote. Yeah. Mm. I, I feel like this is a, just a, a, a common thing in Western civilization. Because, like, if we go all the way back to you know the first democracy with, with uh, in Athens, it was a, Socrates said that you know voting is not a right; it is a skill, and I do agree with him on that. Is not no, no voting should never be a right. It is only a skill that you develop and master as you get older and become a more reasoned person. Now, what about in, generally in terms of voting? A majority of the people who couldn't do any of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, what about just letting them live their own lives? Let them then just be and do what they want to do and not uh, try to push the will of the minority who could vote and dominate their lives through a government in which they don't really... Of course, if they can't have a say in it, why should they have any part to do with it and make their own laws separate from your government? Okay, well, that's one of the reasons why we have like a constitution. Because like there's certain... like Why like America is a federal republic, so there's certain rights that cannot be voted on. Well, you know... If we followed it, you know, that's how it works as a republic. You know, there's certain rights you cannot vote on based on democracy. Like we have, you know, rights of life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. That's an, that's that's not something you can vote on. So you know, generally, you'd be fine if you you know can believe in your fellow people because that's ultimately the problem. It's like, can you trust your fellow man to not want to destroy you? I mean, I don't trust everyone I meet. And I think I think that's one of the main problems with when we talk about government, we talk about how to live with people. Is like. I mean, it's easy. It's well, it's not easy, but it's generally easier to live with people that are like you. But it's like, what what has to be done? What must we sacrifice to live with people that aren't like us? Because I also want to live with people that aren't like me, right? And don't a, think like me. Encourage assimilation to Western yeah, traditions. In some way. But these things are are kind of grew in spite of the state, not because of the state. And you find the whole settlement of the not so wild west were created by people, not by states, but people who had contracts with each other with respect okay. for property rights. Um, cattle ranchers, miners, people going out there creating these towns. The state didn't create any of these things. So you find that these creations of like uh, that we have respect for for common law and property rights, uh, people do believe in that. And that was not because of the state, right? So There was no state. Right. They so they created they, the state. They didn't, need a, they didn't have a state. Yeah, they made, no, but they made one. They didn't make a state. But, well, we have states now. Over there, when they settled it, there was no state. Yeah, they they they, they, yeah but they made states. They made, they made their own cities. without exactly, a, that's the point. No, no. Mm-hmm. It was the uh, state encroachment coming in with their manifest destiny, coming in to kind of dominate and sending in their sheriffs and sending in their enforcers to, to establish government presence into those towns is what established that. But for a while before that, uh, they created their own laws. They solved their own problems of, uh, of justice, of... Uh, uh, territorial uh, disputes, so things made, like that. They made their own states. They made. I want to call. It, well, how do you define a state? Well, that, yeah, that, that's the issue. Is is what do you define as a state? Is okay, it well, it, monopoly on. I forces? think uh, I, I consider a state. You know, we had a debate about that. But I consider <coughs> a state where it's an established area. You have certain customs you all agree on, and you have a, you have a social fabric based on certain principles or guidelines that you follow. How do you so define like, what's not a state? Pretty much everything else apart from that. If you do this, so if it's just like, if if it's just a whole bunch of random people just living in an area, there's there's no interaction between any of them. There's no kind of okay. Well, you know, I believe in this, and you believe in this, and he believes in that, and you know, we can we can kind of agree on that. So you know, do you think the state uh, that we, we live under state. right now is uh is voluntarily? Uh, no, we're a democracy now. That's why we suck. So it's not right. No, no well, like a home. That, by that definition, like a homeowners association could be a state. Yeah, kind of. Pretty much. So then, yeah. my the, the, you could just disperse uh, that down to its smallest unit and say that I am a state because I have a relationship with myself. I know what I'm thinking, and I, you know, like the various definitions. Or this is a state right here. Like we're 
part of the same unit in the same general geographic area. We have similar culture, blah, 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 you know? I mean, there's, de- there's <laughs> multiple ways to be, I mean, I, I, it's like you can stay, a st- okay, so you want these guys like a state of being, how, how, how I am with myself, but we're talking about a state with other people. Uh, my rugby team that I join and, you know, play <laughs> on the weekends yeah. is a state. I mean, not, I mean, not really. It's just a team. I mean, but no, we have roles. No area that you, we, we, yeah, that the country area. club. You know, well, we go. Club? I mean, supposedly, we go out there <laughs> and uh, we, we, there. we we go there and play. We uh, fraternize <laughs> we and we there. drink and we uh, invite our wives and kids to go out there and play. That's a state. But you don't own that. How, area. How it's not something you own. It's but the person who owns friends but owes the state. You can say oh, you're owns part, their right. Then you get to go. So that's a state. Well, yeah, you get to go. I mean, like, let's look at like non-states, like the Rohingyas in the Myanmar. I mean, they are were uh, they were a stateless society, and they got pancakes. Who? The, 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 Rohing- the Rohingyas in the Myanmar. You know that place where that et- that ethnic cleansing was happening, and the, you know the president that won a Nobel Peace Prize. Everyone was freaking out. Versus, it's, it's it like uh, no, Asia, some part yeah. of Asia. Oh, Asia, South yeah. Like, I just East. know that that's what they're called, and the Rohingyas in the Myanmar. And they were sta- they're a stateless society. They got yeah. pancakes. So, in Anatomy of the State, Murray Rothbard defines the state as. That and obviously that's a biased source, but uh, that organization and society which attempts to maintain a monopoly on the use of force and violence in a given territorial area. In particular, it is the only organization and society that obtains its revenue not by voluntary contribution okay. or payment for services rendered, but by coercion. Okay. But he did say something about the, you know, an established area. Or something right. Like, he said established area. So. Oh, but he, I, I, I prefer the main thing that that. Uh, like the state interacts with you is April 15th when it comes time to pay them. And then uh, with the police in the form of pulling you over, you know, opening your pocketbook, giving the guy money. Okay. So in, in those ways I I see is like the main interactions most people have with the state. Yeah. But if, if you know, so this other version, this other definition of the state doesn't seem to comport with the way that most people seem to see it. When you create a state, there's different ways to make. It's like when we talk about government, we we make governments because we make governments. That's what it is. I didn't so make we, a government. Huh? I didn't make a government. <laughs> okay, well, okay, well, you didn't, but you mean you probably could. I, mean, I don't know if we'd be good, but you, you know, we may. <laughs> I'd be a <laughs> merciful <laughs> and kind ruler to you. For yeah, us, I'm, yes. I'm, I'm sure we all would be. Well, I'd be the tyrannical king. That's how I would be. <laughs> I'd be the uh, yeah philosopher king. <laughs> Um, like we create governments and we decide that different things they can do because like the the government is the the position itself. So like you're a senator, okay? Well, the person that's the person that you are doesn't really mean doesn't mean anything to me. But you're a senator and you you decided to do this job to follow this piece of paper that people wrote you know hundreds of years ago <laughs> that says you can do certain they sign things. their names too, right? They, yeah. <laughs> But like you can do certain things, and you you, you shouldn't be following the will. Of the, you sh- well, you should be following the will of the people, but in the way that is in connection with this document that you agree to follow by taking the job. So, they, like when you take a job at a place, okay, well, you, these are guidelines, and yada yada yada. You know, you follow this, and when you don't follow it, okay, well, you got to be terminated. So, like when you buy a house, you are entering into a transaction consensually, voluntarily. Yes. Uh, you sign your name to it, mm-hmm. and that's just to buy a house. But when, when it comes to this other huge aspect of your life, which is consenting to a state, yes. consenting to a government, yeah. you never actually get to sign anything. It just sort of happens. Why yeah, is that? When you're born. Right, well, yeah, when yeah, you're born. Well, I mean, well, we decide who is going to be a citizen or not. It's like arbitrary. I mean, this uh, rugby, cl- rugby, rugby, rugby club that I'm a part of, <laughs> right? <laughs> At this, uh, born into it. Born into it, right? Born into a rugby club. At least... Uh, when I'm born into it, mm-hmm. uh, if I want to leave, yeah, you can yeah. leave, right? Uh, or if I'm in there, if I want to create my own, compete, there's no rugby police coming in here saying, well, you still owe us money, uh, even if you want to compete and create yeah. your own. Uh, whereas the state, the difference is that I could leave voluntarily. I don't have to move anywhere. <laughs> that goes down the street. But with the state, as long as you're in that geographic region, they still demand that you give them money they still demand that you give up your boys until the age of 17 18 years old uh to be enslaved in selective service they still demand human sacrifice they still demand uh that kind of violation and obtainment of your body and of uh your property Wait, human I, sacrifice what well I, I think it, about? when you send people to war right oh, like human draft? Sacri- yeah draft human sacrifice oh, i mean the draft is unconstitutional yeah, <laughs> no, it's not like people care about that, right? So oh, yeah, well, I know people don't care about that. Let's, 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 let's the 
simple things like it's like can you can you convince people to keep following it's so can't, like, isn't that something to say that even if you had your menarca state in, that even today when it was created by the constitution by uh the bill of rights just to you know these kind of checks and balances yes. and thought they could restrain it and it hasn't worked right I mean, we, it worked we, we had a menarca state i mean we did right yeah, we, it, it was 1776 yeah, it lasted for a couple hundred, 150, 150, 150 years. So it doesn't work then. Well, I mean, but I'm not saying it's going to work forever. See, what, what the, the, the problem, a couple things I have that I have a problem with what you said. One, if you're in this rugby club, they're not going to make, they're not going like, to let you make a rugby team to kick their asses in the, in the club that they're at. They're going to kick you out of the club. I mean, no one's going to do that. It's like, go to a, it's like, if I go to a school and the school's not going to make me, st- let, let me start a school inside of their school to beat their school. I mean, nobody does that. You don't think competitors, uh, join sometimes together for their own mutual benefits? It depends on circumstances, but most people aren't really like, no. King's Dominion gets together with Bush Gardens and do seasonal passes together all the time. Yeah, but they decide to do that. I mean, that's well, not always going to be the case. That's an interesting comment, though. You said uh, nobody's going to let them get together in their school to form their own school. To beat their own school. But it's almost like a way of looking at the state owns everything, and they just kind of let you have your little bit of your little piece of it, and you got to like pay property tax on that or whatever. That's now. That's you now, gotta, though. That's yeah, over what three hundred years? Well, almost three hundred years. The country's almost three hundred years old, sort of. But that's over a long amount of time, and a lot of these problems. Well, well, I mean, we did have problems like we, in there in early America. We had the legal tender laws, which a lot of, create a lot of problems we have now, and then other things. But I mean, a lot of the problems we have now didn't really start until Teddy Roosevelt with the start of the progressive movement. I thought there was problems back then. The Whiskey Rebellion uh, yeah. tax is kind of a big problem. Aliens and seditions. You can't uh, joke and make fun of sitting president. <laughs> no sooner was the Constitution adopted than John Adams signed the Alien Sedition Act. Freedom of speech, <laughs> not for you. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, I, mean, I think that's mostly just being, him, him being an asshole. I think that's so it doesn't restrain these people so who even assholes. wrote it. You have to, it's, my, it's not just the document itself. It's also the people that follow it. I mean, can they stop you? I mean, it's, it's, I mean, a piece of paper is not going to stop you. Really, like, like a law can't stop someone. Is the people that follow it, the people that enforce it? I mean, can they stop you? So maybe that wasn't a good document to to uh, to create such a society. Even- and what should have been created is this competing contracts of such a nature, like the Constitution, not one to dominate all, but many to create their own within their own communities that makes them seem fit. Like the one with the Amish works perfectly well for them. They don't need a Constitution. They don't need any of that stuff. They do great on yeah, their own. They've been they, doing that for they, like what three hundred years yeah, out there. That's just, that's just that's just their own version of the Constitution, it's just not written down and you know as well, organized. Well, you can't it. just say that they but U.S. The Constitution thing. has a monopoly on the word Constitution. Yeah, no, they I mean, can I'm all have their own Constitution. Monopoly, but I'm saying that's they're do, they're doing they're kind of doing the same thing, just not exactly how we did it. But but like when you talk about the Amish, that's another problem that have that they're allowed to exist in a larger, more broader society. You don't like that? I mean, no. I mean, I'm fine with that. Okay, but like, cool. But yeah. like. When we talk about constitution, the constitution has limited powers. Like, there's only like 18 enumerated powers, and so the federal the federal government can only do a couple things. Like, the, the whole thing was when he was saying competing constitutions. Yeah, well, it's, every state has its own constitution. Like, I've read the state the constitution of the state of Virginia. It kind of sounds like the federal constitution, and the, the, that's what they did. They compete with different constitutions. Right. So, I mean, the, the federal government isn't even supposed to be doing a lot. That's just something that's happened and eroded over time. Like, the, the, you know, James Madison said, you know, the powers of the, the federal government are supposed to be few and defined. The powers of the states are numerous and indefinite. So, you know, you're supposed to be the states and the local government and the people themselves. They're supposed to be doing things. So it was like, I'm not worried about the federal government in the sense that I'm worried about the states. The states gave up all their powers. What do you think about uh, property rights? Can you define property rights? I don't. I want to make sure I don't say something that's gonna like backfire. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can look up like a good definition. I'm sure. Well, I mean, you I, know. Like, I just property is something you own. It can be physical. It can be non-physical. Right, and people still have respect for property rights. Who will say yeah. under capitalism? Right. Yeah. What is mine is mine. What's yours is yours. Yeah. All right. Um, now, under the Constitution, it allows for taxation. What do you think about in certain aspects? Taxation and, and there are allowance. For that creation under a minarchist state. Well, for me, I'm okay with that. Like, I'm okay with giving up a certain part <clears> of my freedom. Like, I mean, oh, it's like, okay, well, I'd rather the part that I give up be in some monetary value. Like, in other places, okay, well, you have to serve for this amount of time. I don't want to do that. So I'm okay with the the price I have to pay being some tiny amount in a monetary value. I mean, other places, they, oh, well, you have to sacrifice your firstborn and have their heart ripped out or something like that. I'd rather not do that. I mean, you're, you're a capitalist, right? Yeah. Now, we're a capitalist because 
we feel, and not feel, but it's been demonstrated time and time again that the market competition creates these good and goods and services, a myriad of ones that maybe doesn't fit everyone's agenda or needs, right? A Rolls Royce versus like a Honda Civic or something, right? Uh, now, why is it that we're capitalistic about all these other ventures against right to food or right to housing and all this sort of stuff? But maybe there has to be a right to a certain areas under a minarchism state that the capitalism could not produce. What is it about like what? this? Like, well, you provide me an example of you being a minarchist. Mostly the classical minarchist position, it would be that only the state can provide uh, judication or security. Laws. Right. Okay, so I, I think the basic three things you need for a nation that it would work for the most part is laws. So we have a uniform set of laws that cannot... Um, you can't give special privileges to people. I think, I think that's, a, that's another part of the Constitution. I like the, the, the nobility clause. You can't, you can't give titles of nobility to certain people. You know, we're supposed to be, any law you make is supposed to be the general welfare. So it's the average American. I think, I feel like that's something we should all be able to agree on. They can grant nobility? No, like, no, like they, they can't grant nobility. That's what it's like. The nobility government clause, you can, yeah, you can't, yeah. the federal government cannot grant titles of nobility. That's like that special privileges. That would be so privileges. cool, wouldn't it? Well, I mean, yeah, I, 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 I wish we did that. <laughs> I would, I would night, love it. If, night, night, well, night. I mean, that's I mean, not really no, nobility is special privileges, right? I mean, that's what the you know all the kings and queens they they. I mean, it wasn't what they were; it was that the privileges they got. You know, well, I can live in this giant house. Then. Well, they got tracts of land, you know. Just oh, yeah, here you are, and you get all the people who live on this land, <laughs> right? Who are your workers now? And, okay, so that's what that's what I was saying. Um, laws that are uniform and no titles of nobility. I so think a military, a, a market a defense. Okay, do you believe a market cannot create a uh, uniform code or codify I rules? So. I mean, have you seen any of this stuff in the existing in the marketplace at all? What like laws? Rules? Laws? Rules have been codified. You can say within competing uh, agencies. I don't want to say. Like you could say insurance companies, okay. they kind of codify uh, procedures to kind of make things efficient and things to go run quickly. In the event that your person hits my okay. client or my client hits yours, we don't kind of middle in the course for like 20 years. Uh, time is money. Okay. Here's the rules and procedures to kind of go forward. Uh, if you hit my client, we go ahead and give you money and kind of do it that way. And then you have what well, we come known, you could say as laws in the marketplace between these kind of uh, insurance companies uh, to... Go ahead with procedures of uh, conflicts of dispute because All those laws, though. I mean, what, what, why do why do laws have a force of law? Because you have to follow the agreement ultimately. See, but, if, if, if your insurance companies decide on an outcome, see, but this is not a problem I have when you're describing it like that. Like an auto insurance company is in the same. Just I mean, what is a, a law? A law. Why do why why do laws exist? What are the purpose of laws? There's a couple. I mean, I I think well, personally, I think there's a couple reasons. I think sometimes it's to enshrine certain societal attitudes that have already existed so like you know in the constitution it says you can coin gold and silver i mean the reason that's in there because before the constitution people were using gold and silver as money so that, that's just something old okay well we see everyone doing that so we're just gonna you know, put it in this piece of paper that says okay well you know we, we're just gonna continue on with the same thing i think that's one of the reasons why we have laws i think the other is to encourage some people to not do certain things so that I so, think some people, you know, they don't have their own limitations on themselves. Like, they have no limitations. Like, some, some psychopath out there has no limitations on himself. So, it's like, the only thing stopping him is, like, the limitations that other people around him place on him. Like, gun-free zones, for instance. Well, yeah, yeah I mean, I, I don't, those, <laughs> yeah. those don't work. But it's like, I mean, like probably, psychos, people, you know, they don't follow the signs. Like, the si you put the sign up, the law says. Yeah, but, I mean, I think you can't bring a gun certain in there. people right? are like that. That they, they see that this thing is like, well... It says I can't do this. I think there are certain people out there that are like that. I mean, there's, 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 there's people out there for everything. There's, there's all there's any any kind of person you can think of or can't even think of. They probably exist somewhere. Okay, I could sum down what you're saying down to one point in that logics to protect property rights. Okay, yeah, right. Uh, so if it has nothing to do with uh, protecting rob property rights, it has nothing to do with the law, but, you know, violent enforcement of arbitrary opinion, like you could say the war on drugs, for example. Yeah, Victim that's unconstitutional. Right, victimless crimes. Yeah, I can give you plenty of examples of laws that are bad, that shouldn't exist based on constitutional or Western right. philosophy in general. Right, they're, they're innumerable. Yeah, it's infinite. Uh, but so you have these agencies in the market creating yes. 
uh, these rules to protect property rights and to make the victim whole. That's why they pay out insurance. Okay. Right. So I find then, and then the marketplace outside of the state, you have creation of what you could describe as laws. You can go to a, a gated community of a golf course to say, you know, don't golf between the hours of like 2 a.m. and uh, 4 a.m. or something, sure. right? That could be a uh, covenant of a law of people that come in before they move in. It's like, yeah, I agree. I give explicit consent, okay. right? Here's my explicit signature to these laws. And then so you can find then that the marketplace is capable of creating laws. It's not something that's exclusive only to a group of people who claim to call themselves a government that only they but we created the government Remember but that? but only they mm-hmm. can create a law okay right yeah so i'm saying that as a capitalist that some that the argument sometimes is that government should be involved in these areas because the market place cannot create them mm-hmm. but that's falsifiably uh, untrue well, but you, given what is exists all around us yeah, today you're talking about just like a country club i mean but it's not going to stop there what's not going to stop there the country club what about it? What about it? It's not going to stop there. That's what I'm saying. It's but not they country. grow? Yeah. <coughs> that's, that's, that's great. Yeah. Like, when you're talking about a By nation, market and uh, supply, right? Well, I mean, no, no it's, not even, it's not even that. You're it's, saying it's just going to expand it's the over people. more people? or Yeah, it's the people. Okay, well, remember, like, you, ever, you ever played the game Civilization? I love that game. Exactly. But like, how does it start? It goes from the individual to the family to the the group and tribe to the the state and to the nation to the civilization. I mean, that's that's how the linear linear, linear path of our species. That's how we're going to go. So, I mean, when you're talking about the country club, it's not going to stop there. So, it's going to keep expanding. It's That's gonna, good. It's going yeah. it it to it start absorbing people that aren't always going to follow these laws. And it's not going to be just laws that are just for these people. It's going to expand to this in giant area. And I mean, it's, it's, a, it's not going to stop with it. I mean, and these people that are making the laws in the country club, they're, they're going to be called the government. That's, what, that's what's going to happen. They're, they're going to be called the government. What's the difference between a government and a... Um... Uh, uh, country club that people follow voluntarily because if you don't follow the government right. rules, they come after you with guns. If you don't, well, like, a money. great example is Liechtenstein, which the the ruler of Liechtenstein has said. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. He's basically said any of these little precincts okay. can just leave if they want. Sure. Um, and so if you're gonna have a you know this system of of the state, it seems like the mo- the one that's most supportive of freedom is just giving these uh precincts or each as small as they want to be yeah the ability to just leave at any time if they don't if they don't consent any longer but it seems like we don't have that ability and you lose that ability to leave over time with most governments that seem to i mean that is a problem i mean things get better over time than they get worse i mean that's just how things are. I mean, is, I mean, that, they, when, I, when I talk about a minarchist nation, it's not, I'm not trying to make it last forever. I'm just trying to, how, what can I do to make it last as long as possible? To what end? I don't know. Just as long as it goes. To, to what purpose? Just to make sure things kind of stay somewhat stable. Like, Maybe. I mean, it's not going to last forever. I, mean, I, I feel like, I think for our species, no matter what, we're going to naturally move towards democracy but if you're okay with these things not lasting forever you know like the most businesses don't last forever this country yeah. club is not going to last forever they're probably going to have another one that probably comes into place nearby it's like offer better ways or better living or better rules uh maybe the country club uh ceo passes rules that uh messes up yeah. or <laughs> their return be, of income they their profit another, or they get invaded <clears throat> by another country or they get, there's, a, there's a lot of things that well that's happen. an that's another interesting argument though because people will often say hey what a what about you? All right, you have an anarchist state, and uh, or it's not a state; it's yeah, an anarchist nothing. land. <laughs> and somebody comes in and uh, invades uh, because they they have a state and they have monopolized all of this violence that they can then force on you. Right? Yeah. Um. So so to the anarchist, you know, and uh, to us, maybe that's a more difficult uh, question. Sometimes I've I've kind of formulated an answer. Yeah, What's but. your answer? <laughs> My answer is just that. <laughs> let me set myself they're, up. <laughs> <they're>, <laughs> let me just knock it out of the park after getting a, an easy one. No, it's the uh, the idea that it's just a, another state trying to. So whatever means you used to eliminate the previous state, you would also use the, the same means to uh, eliminate another state that tries to um, uh, create hegemony over free individuals yeah to create a state to beat another state it's not as if uh not necessarily you can engage in again contractual relationships with other people that say yeah, we that have works. private you know militaries and and weapons and yeah. etc you know right and how long do you have minarchist countries last before they're invaded and attacked name one that hasn't 
that has been invaded or attacked. Yeah, taken over, dominated. Well, I mean, but all nations are like that. Okay, so minarchism doesn't keep you safe from being attacked well, from I mean, the state well, or I mean, from dominating. I'm, I'm not guaranteeing that you're going to. I mean, so, I mean I'm not neither are we. that some bigger person isn't going to come beat neither, you up neither, and do that now. Neither are we. But at least in this one, at least under, you can say, Anarchistan, there is no uh, domination of you have to give me your money. If you don't, mm-hmm. men in blue costumes will come and throw you into a cage. Okay. Well, right? I, mean, I don't think the federal government should be doing that anyway. Like, that, that's not something I would have. Then I mean, how would you enforce taxation? I wouldn't, honestly. Like, at a national level, like, I, I would create a federation. Well, that takes out I part of Rothbard's <laughs> like, definition of the state. Uh, <laughs> if he says they have the ability to extract, you know, tax. Well, I mean, that, but that's, that's his opinion. Yeah. So I, don't, I don't have to agree with that. So you're saying in America state, people don't have to uh, give up their property to the state, and there will be no repercussions. Yeah. I don't, so, I don't have, like, I would, like I, would, I would have taxes, but it's like, you can do them if you want to. Like, like I'm th- like, I, I would only create a nation. Like, I wouldn't make a state. I, I couldn't run a state. Like, I couldn't make a state work. I, I'd probably make a nation work. Like, I, w- I would create an own federation. Maybe how it is now that the states can decide all the things. Like, I would have a national sales tax. You don't have to follow it. You can decide to. It's like how it is now. Like, you, if you don't, you know, if you want to pay more tax, you can go to, you know, tax.pay.gov. <laughs> and, and if nobody pays any of these taxes, <laughs> And okay, the state collapses, and everyone will say, well, we'd rather just <laughs> let the market. <laughs> well, I mean, well, I mean, if the federal government collapsed now, there will still be the states, the state governments. And then after the state governments, it would be the local governments. And then at that point, then then it will be what you talk about. But, right. you know, I, 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 I completely see the, uh, the federal government com- com- uh, collapsing. Well, it's going to collapse anyway because yeah. when we go through hyperinflation. Right. But the states, I mean, I don't know. So your taxes would be voluntary sure. which is different from like my experience with taxation and everyone else's and yeah, globally uh yeah, for all of fun. history has never been voluntary well think of th- things that you buy that you don't want to buy but you know you have to so i need to buy utilities or i put need to put new tires on my car or whatever so for, to the average person um, they would then thoroughly vet all the things they were paying taxes for. Right. So if it's roads, it's like, oh, absolutely, I want roads because I drive my car. So I want it to be decent, halfway decent. So I could imagine the average person saying, well, since the government isn't providing this anymore and taxing us, I guess we are going to, I am going to pony up something. Right. I mean, but maybe not as much as they would have. Right. And for me, like, I would, there would be like exceptions. Like, I'd be like, okay, well, someone's attacking us. We're going to war. I'm so, like I'm, I'm like okay. I I know this is bad and it's philosophically wrong, but it's like I'm gonna I'm gonna need you to pony up with some because you know we're getting our asses kicked. You'd be like Caesar, you know, in times of war, and have to come yeah, in and spend all liberties. Yeah, and, I, think, I think well, not to spend all liberties, but I feel like you know at that point you'd I mean, be like Lincoln. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, I feel like you know if the country's getting its ass kicked, I feel like at that point I'm like, okay, well, you guys got to pony up some. We're losing. I, I mean, we can lose if you guys don't want to lose. I mean, we can lose. I mean, that's I mean, fine. But it's like this is well. Well, armed populace uh, in the world, you know, right? Uh, you, you've seen what happened at the Bundy Ranch, right? Bundy Where Ranch. Bundy Ranch so at the yeah, first time the ever Bundy Ranch. in oh, the Bundy. history, Bundy Ranch ever in history, not Bunny, not the one in I Las heard Vegas. Bundy Ranch. Oh, oh. Of course he did. <laughs> like, nice. <laughs> oh, that's the story from Other one, Bundy Ranch. First time in history I've ever seen someone with rifles with uh, scope down, aiming down at federal agents, yeah. crossfire, you know, and not being shot back, uh, and that's because. The argument, if the government did continue to intrude, they couldn't win the argument. They're always about trying to win the argument and hide the fact it's all about theft and everything like that. But the more argument was about property rights and whose land was it. Mm-hmm. And it was the bunnies and not the federal government. And they couldn't, they couldn't win that argument. So they had to back off. They could win the argument when they took over the, the government uh, wildlife facility. Then they could say they're trespassing. And then they can no, say they'll that. Lose. Yeah, they'll lose with that. Uh, even they were all acquitted. Yeah. Yeah, they reached no acquitted. But uh, you'll find that American spirit here mm-hmm. is about property rights. It's about yeah. uh, facing off those kind of tyrants. And I think that you find then that we're very well capable of putting voluntary militias uh, in fighting back and shooting back. Yeah. Uh, the, the American Revolution started off with voluntary militias going out there and fighting back and shooting back before George Washington kind of messed up everything and didn't win any wars yeah, when he, he took was, over. He wasn't really the best leader. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I mean, he had, he had people. I mean, like, being, a, being a good leader isn't always just winning battles. It's also putting people in charge that are better than you. 
He put in like the Prussian system, whereas the yeah. people who elected their own, uh, their captains and lieutenants were because of merits within their own circles. And he, right. And he, he put in, uh, the Prussian models like, no, it's going to be pretty much favors. It's going to be people who, you know, put them in charge and not those who should be in charge because yeah. they have the capabilities of doing so. And that's what led him to his disastrous campaign. If not, the French have did not come involved themselves to well, help a lot us of win. things that helped us win. But I mean, yeah. He yeah. wasn't. He wasn't the best. I mean, there's certainly things he could have done that would have been better. That's what I'm saying. Voluntary militias, American spirit of fighting back and shooting back and getting b- together and banding together, a uh, band of men to to fight against tyranny, uh, is not something to kind of shrug off here, especially in our history. Maybe in New Zealand, you know, <laughs> uh, maybe Australia. You know? But do you think they would have won? Yeah, I mean, you think so? They would have beat the British Empire. Yes, the British Empire has to go across uh, a whole freaking ocean to to fight them. I mean, look, why did the United States didn't win in Vietnam? I mean, well, there's a lot built, of reasons for that. I mean, a lot it of re- it wasn't a legitimate war for starters. Yeah, but you know, rice paddy farmers, Trains. right? They lost yeah. a million people versus uh, Americans, what, fifty thousand, sixty thousand, but still, like, they couldn't keep up with it, right? Well, yeah, I mean, well, I mean, one of the problems with that is one, it was not a real war. Guerrilla warfare in Spain no, I mean, against it, Napoleon. History is sort of replete with no, many I mean, examples. It wasn't a real war, like the Vietnam War. We just call it, it wasn't the declared. Vietnam War. Yeah, yeah it, it, the, just, it, the know, people it, in Vietnam will call it a war. <laughs> I mean, yeah, to them, but to us, you know, in August 1964, you know, the U.S. Senate just authorized the Johnsons to escalate the actions in Vietnam. They never actually declared war. I mean, I think had we declared war, I mean, we probably still. I think we still would have lost. Actually, no, I, we would have. We would have lost 100. percent but, I mean, I don't think it would have been that how it was. I should, well, I mean, we shouldn't have been there anyway. In the first Nick, order. that's what you're saying. I mean, I don't think we would have. It's the problem of I mean, I not. the willingness of a, a group of people or this government to sacrifice all of these people in Vietnam for something that it wasn't clear is benefiting them. So, it, in a way, it does kind of call the bluff of this idea that, well, you're against an all-powerful state with nukes and you know uh, aircraft and whatnot, but you're losing to these guys in Afghanistan or Vietnam. Uh, it's just their their weapon is time. They're using it against you, and they're saying we're we're gonna just wait you out, and we're gonna you know keep using AK-47s while you fly. <laughs> right. I mean, it's also with the Vietnam War that, you know, people in America, they knew it was unjust. They knew that they people, they hated the draft. I mean, people saw what happened to the My Lai Massacre. They they did not like that. People, I mean, over time, people knew what happened to the Gulf of Tonkin, which is what you, Lyndon Johnson used to escalate the war. And everyone knew it was fake, just like all the other things we've done. Like like when, when I made that video for the CIA that you, you said you like, all the different things we've done. I mean, yeah, I mean. That's what I'm saying. It wasn't a real war. I mean, There's no chance that they could. It was just a proxy war. It was like the you know us versus the Soviet Union, and you know, well, you know, back then we we, were, we weren't really a republic anymore. But it was the the, con- the idea that it was you know freedom and you know being a republic and yada 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 versus communism. But you know that didn't work out so well. I find that states usually uh, have an interest in taking over states to take over the tax farms. You state? have uh, Hitler, for example, wanted to take over France very quickly to take over the system and the hegemony of people who already agreed to giving up their money to taxes and taxes would go to Hitler. Uh, okay. Most states kind of want to do that. When you take over, try to take over a territory that has no taxes, it's like you're not really fighting state actors anymore. There's nothing really there to take over. That's why they say Afghanistan is the graveyard of empires uh, throughout history. Right. So you're coming into a territory where there's no taxes. Who are you trying to take over? Right. People that are now going to bow to a state, people who will uh, gladly uh, rebel yelling uh, to shoot back. Okay, you can just kill all of them. Because they're too used to not paying anything. They they know what it's like to just, you know, live their life and be like, oh, that's not that's some random group of guys. Like they have a very strong idea of what the government is. It's this group of mobsters in kabul right. in afghanistan <laughs> right who are running the country with <clears throat> with more weapons than they've got right so they they've called the bluff they understand the dynamic right <laughs> well i mean the things are like when you're talking about the state i mean it's still the people i mean they could decide those those people i mean no matter what they can they, they could be good or bad i mean you don't even need to be a state to take over stuff i mean like like i was thinking how like jim jones killed over a thousand people just but pretty much by himself i mean i mean think about what if he had done that with today's technology, I mean, how, how much worse do you think that would have been? Jim Jones, the guy who Kool Aid people. Yeah, the jo- the Jones Kool-Aid, Kool-Aid massacre. Kool Aid I mean, hasn't you, changed much. I if, don't know. If, <laughs> well, I mean, no, I mean, like with social media and how it's. We, I mean, yeah. everyone has a smartphone, and you know, we, I can get information twenty four seven. How how much worse do you think it would have been 
if we had if he had to need technology. I mean, he probably wasn't a state. not at all. Yeah, yeah, but and he wasn't a state. He was just one guy. And so the thing is, still the you don't even need the state. Is not is the people. Well, there's um, just so much more he, information available today. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's him, and he was he was a degree. bad person. He was objectively a bad person, and what he did was wrong. I mean, he killed. He killed. He killed everything in the area. He even poisoned the animals in the area. Like, yeah. He killed everything. I mean, how much would have Genghis Khan uh, got rid of if he had access to today's technology? Well, probably a lot worse. All right? Yeah. Um, is the people? But I'm, but my state. argument is that you don't need a state to have people to get together to create a coalition to fight back to shoot back uh, to arm themselves. That's not something that exists because of a state mm-hmm. right that's something that ex- that has existed through all time in spite of the state you have the coalition of city states of uh, greece who banded together and against the might of persia outnumbered like 10 to 1 right and they all and because of uh, their freedom to like to arm themselves and not arm themselves with like crappy uh, wooden shields and stuff like that that the persian units had uh that they were out there able to defeat them battle of thermopylae city states yeah city states yeah yeah the, the closest, knowledge of terrain and yeah. obviously was big. But, right. So I'm saying, so you can have city states here, right? But absent of a government, you can say city communities, whatever you want to call them, um, can form coalitions against a larger one. And history is like full of examples of like, people going against Napoleon, people going against Hitler, people going against, um, Genghis Khan or, uh, the Battle of Tours in, uh, in France against Sars Martel. You know, people always, Getting together to defeat a larger threat. Yeah, That's not something that exists because of the state. Those people that you're talking about, like Hitler and Napoleon, they didn't win wars; they won battles. What do you mean? I mean, like the like they, they had the, resi- the the French, you know, the resistance fighters. They were doing small stuff, but like, who were the people that won the war? It was the British, the Russians, and the Americans. Like actual states with giant militaries that went and destroyed the Nazis. I mean, you can. Pull in the whole thing for another discussion that the United States calls World War II to happen. Well, yeah, we did call that uh, that they well, knew no, that Japan didn't... was coming in there and didn't... they wanted to be neutral, but they allowed the Pearl Harbor to be bombed. But by the same token, a lot of those young guys volunteered to join the military because, at the time and because they perceived. Yeah. And, and the same would happen uh, under a stateless society. We would say, I recognize that this is a threat. Look, give me some weapons. I'll learn. I'll get trained up right. and, and I'll, I'll go fight because this is. Uh, you know, this is aggression against us. I'd volunteer. Right. I'm sure you would volunteer to us. It depends. It depends on what it is. Yeah. I mean, I mean, okay. So I mean, here's my one question: If there was no to you, if there's no states, no governments, do you think there would still be war? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So then there's no difference if you get rid of the. States I think it would be much less violent and much uh, less uh, lucrative to start wars. How much money does uh you know this? How much money does uh DOD Pentagon waste? Uh, the, the third highest budget, so I think eight hundred billion a year. Right, and how much of that do you think is wasted? How much of like the CIA proxy war was like unconstitutional? Yeah. yeah, you wouldn't have any of that. You don't think we would have stuff like that? Oh, not like that on that grand of a scale <laughs> of massive so? theft to prop it up. If, yeah. I mean, Walmart wouldn't start wars with uh, Sears. Like, yeah, Walmart. <laughs> they would just say, "No, we're just gonna." Because so, stuff for cheap. Because, like you said, everything is digital now. People don't know. Like Walmart starting stuff in Costa Rica. Burr, yeah, over. but that's. Now you're talking about now. I mean, in the past it wasn't like that. I mean, those groups starting wars, and you don't know what's going to be like that in the future. You talk. You're just talking about now. I'm thinking about what happened in the past. I'm sure thinking what could happen tomorrow. I mean, I don't know. Walmart. I mean, the guys that won Walmart could be like, okay, you know, what? we're going to start an army. We're going to invade Sears. I don't know that. But it's not profitable because you got to spend all well, this mean, money yeah, on this well, stupid army when you could not, be buying other shit. It's right. Not just about <laughs> profit. It kind of is. No, yeah. no, but not all wars are fought for profit. Is it, I, I think was it uh, Victor Davis Hanson. He's a, you know, if if I think I can get more than I will lose, then there will be a war. I'm, I'm not, I don't have to be fighting for a profit. I could just be fighting to beat you. A fair victory. Uh, you're talking about like a monetary profit. <clears throat> but, but my my point was that this a spider of a state, right? The belief that only the state can produce the production of defense. History is full of it. You can look at the Pinkertons at a one point in history. They had more armed guards than the entire United States military combined. Okay. That is a market production of security. They so uh, they, they don't exist as, at their height anymore because the government put past laws to limit them because they wanted to create the FBI and they didn't want their competition. No, that's okay. No, I actually read that law. It just says that the federal government is not allowed to hire the Pinkertons as mercenaries or 
and basically and then they like exerted that. their influence all around to, to kind of suppress it, them it, wait it destroyed their influence because the federal yeah. government wasn't going to hire them so because the federal so okay so the pinkerton sucked <clears throat> everyone decided to not work with them it's negative the image government. yeah nobody wants that, yeah that's what destroyed their image that the federal yeah. government didn't work with them. the federal okay, so, government uh okay, passing then, those laws yes okay then the, their image wasn't that good anyway if 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 if, well, if not working with the federal well, government uh, what destroyed them well, whatever <laughs> whatever you think of their image that doesn't uh, dispute the fact that at one point they had more armed security personnel yeah, than the United States government. Yeah, they also had a lot of problems. I mean, there were, I think I was reading about Every, this. Who doesn't have problems? Yeah, but that's the thing. You're, like, you're, you're holding them in some high regard. I mean, they, I they were like this. They were the, 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 the government. They did commit the exact same problems with the government. Eventually, they, they were hired by the government. In the very beginning, they were about stopping bank robbers. Uh, they were very beginning, they are about investigation, real detective work. This is where Most eventually stop riots, where, they were mercenaries, too. Yeah, people who were taking over Rioting, uh, unions. Private, they were, yeah, people people were taking over uh, the uh, facilities. They would come in there to kick them out and bring back the property rights to the property owners. But it wasn't even taken over. That's what they like, were doing. Yeah, but no, there was actually like an. Ev- I I can't remember what it was exact the exact thing. But it's like there actually was an event where it was just like people were protesting outside the thing. And the Pinkerton shot all these people. No, they took. Oh no, which one you're talking about? They took over the facility. They will not prevent the sure? regular. Yes, they will not prevent the regular workers to go in there. Uh, and because they took over it, they call in the Pinkerton. The Pinkerton didn't shoot their first uh, shot. They were sailing up the bars of a river, and they were expl- dynamite were being thrown at them. They were being shot at, and eventually that would be called back. That disaster of a situation it was started passing off these laws yeah. from the government. Yeah, that's a good one. I. I- I, I think I, I read a little bit of what. What is the main? Was it Pittsburgh? Just look at the Pinkertons in general. I mean, it should be on like Wikipedia page or something. I, I mean, it, it might have been like that. I don't know. I, I, there was there was a lot of problems with the Pinkertons. That's what happened. Eventually, they took up government contracts, and then eventually, the government wants to get ready to create the FBI, and they don't need their kind of competition. They've had they've learned a lot for the Pinkertons. And Home you can find the, strike. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Uh, the Pinkertons. Uh, if you look it up, the union people took over the property. They were there to. Uh, remove the trespassers and give it back to the property owners and they wouldn't even let regular people regular workers who didn't <coughs> want to be part of the union to go in there and work yeah pinkerton's attempted to land under cover of darkness at about 4 a.m a large crowd of families had kept pace with the boats as they were towed by a tug in the town a few shots were fired at the tug and barges but no one was injured the crowd tore down the barbed wire fence and strikers and their families surged onto the homestead plant grounds some in the crowd threw stones at the barges but strike leaders shouted for restraint but according to the new york, according <coughs> to the new york times the pinkerton shot first the news, newspaper reported that pinkerton opened fire and wounded willing for the worker let's see what captain pinkerton deployed. i mean it's sometimes you need to shoot first <laughs> oh, yeah you can shoot first but look at look, look at this later <coughs> i've looked at this extensively myself this <laughs> okay, is particular of contention with a lot of anarcho-communists this is why i had to look into this because a lot of them are sometimes full of BS, and so I found the information like they're wrong. Um, as it's like, anarcho syndicalist. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I know a lot about that uh, Pinkerton subject. Okay. But eventually, yeah, they did hire, become hired by government contracts, and they shouldn't have done that. True. That's where their demise uh, uh, began, I would say. But government started passing these laws to kind of outlaw them uh, because it was in competition of them creating the Federal Bureau of Investigation. And that is their history connection to the Pinkertons. So my point is that uh, the market can produce armed security. Okay. And that was it, right? Okay. So a lot of the objections sometimes to market security is that they can't produce them on a scale of the government. But there was a point in time, which I'm making the argument for, that there was larger market security, armed security, than there was of the entire United States government uh, military combined. That's it. The, but, with the Pinkertons, you know, it's I love the uh, idea that well, the government uh, just stopped doing business with them, so you know it's okay. But when you realize that the government is the mafia, essentially masquerading as a human rights organization, it's it's like okay. Then you realize that when they decide not to do business with the Pinkertons, they're like, hey, you know, hey, you people over there, I think it'd be really bad if you decided to do business with the Pinkertons. You know, like uh, that really hurts that business right. all of a sudden. Uh, so it's not just that they choose, you know, to no longer work with them. It's Wait, but but that's not influence what the, that. the actual law said. It just said that the federal government, the federal government by itself. Yeah, is it's not, not just that. Be... It's it's in the newspapers. It's, it's everywhere. It's yeah, but, uh, pro- propaganda but, of the state but, putting my, out. My problem with that is you're saying there was more Pinkertons than the U.S. military. Yeah, 
okay, why should there be a lot of people in the military at that time? Well, there was there was no war back then. There was nothing happening. Why, why there should why should there be? Because obviously there is a lot of th- uh, theft going on, and they need yeah, a not, market to to stop them because no, the government couldn't. Yeah, but that's not the job of the federal government. I mean, we're talking about the federal government. That's, we're, not, we're, that's not the job of it. I mean, we're talking about wars. We're talking about people invading people who are violating property rights. Here's mm-hmm. a market that was created to resolve those conflicts and to stop the violation yeah. of property rights. Well, the Pinkerton's a military. Uh, private security. No, were, were they a military? Uh, what? No, what, what, no, no like, like a no, military I mean, force. I mean, they, could could the Pinkerton's, like, I can't even think of Could they have stand up against the United okay. States government? No, no, not the United States government. Like, if there was a, a war, like an actual like, declared war, like say some country, it was like, I can't even think of a country back then that would Like that a would mercenary have, force? No, like, like that's the thing, but I don't think the Pinkertons were an actual military force. They were just like a private security force. They, yeah. they weren't going to, if someone, if someone declared a war, Against America at the time, I don't, the Pinkertons would they have won? Do you think they just let the British burn down the White House? You're saying no, but, that, but you're no, saying but, you wanted but, the British to burn down the White House. No, but, that's but, basically but that's, what that's you're the saying. You want the United States military <laughs> to be uh, not be able to, to fend off the British to come over and burn down our capital, <laughs> as if like there are they've lost a nuclear mm. weapon off the coast of Tybee Island in Georgia. They're not that exactly competent. You have oh, told yeah, me many we, stories about how many of these Navy ships are not really particularly in good working order. Well, yeah, that's because of how it is now yeah and because it's so huge and we do so many things if it wasn't like that the military would be better if we were like okay let's build like an actual ship that is meant to do things now only most of our ships are just meant to die all right but it's like that's the thing we're, we're our tax rates aren't high enough they need to be, they need <laughs> to be much higher but, but, bernie sanders is right but you're talking about like a military <laughs> solution well how many military like market militaries are there i don't know is there, is there? Can you think of any that have ever existed? Like the, the Pinkertons weren't a military. All right, so you can have uh, in history. You have um, uh, Machiavelli wrote about uh, the problem that he had in Italy with all these private security and all these armies that they would never go to the point of actually killing each other because the uh-huh. cost of doing that for an individual person to die was high. So you had all these city states with the mercenary armies and they would clash, but just mostly just to do a show. And he was uh, ups- did he didn't like that because he wanted to create. Uh, the prince, uh, the king, to conquer out of Italy. Okay. But he was saying, don't rely on these mercenary armies because they'll go up to a point and shoot, but and then back off, right? Because the cost is so high for an individual person in their armies to lose. And the military, they don't really care about the cost of somebody. What would you get? Like, uh, you get some insurance or whatnot, but you know, you're pretty much collateral damage. It's not so much that they have. Like, if you put, that's why you know, private security is like ten times more than it would be if you went to Blackwater or any other private security because it's very expensive. Um, what, what do they say? You, you throw down a million dollar missile to knock down a couple hundred uh, dollar worth of uh, Humvees or something like that in <laughs> yeah, the desert. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not efficient as what a private. And, and there was a threat, for example. I think a great solution would be like throw some uh, drones and drop some C fours. Be done with it, right? The military solution here is like, well, we're going to be established there for <laughs> a couple of years. Ground. Boots on the ground. Yeah, we're going to be there well, for but, for forever. But th- that. It kind of goes back to my earlier question when you said if there was no states and governments, would there still be war? Yeah. Okay. So would would okay if you're at a war, would these military these no not military not militaries that are private security forces they would just stop when they run out of money. I mean, wars don't work like that. Wars 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 don't stop when they run out of money. No, wars stop when one side is destroyed, and if one side isn't destroyed, the they, war they is would still go into debt. They, they might go yeah, I mean, into debt. They might get loans. Countries do that all the time. Uh, countries I are mean, completely disintegrated because they want to debt. But then yeah. they're accountable for their debts. You have uh, King Henry the uh, the Eighth that went into heavily into debt with the uh, war with France. Yeah. Uh, right. So you have history of people the war stopping because uh, they don't have money for it either. It's uh, so unprofitable right. that it would make no sense. The average person, the average war would probably just consist of you throwing paintballs at your your neighbor's house. Like that would I mean, be maybe. a war. I, mean, I think the me. I think I'm the war of the future would be the war of Twitter's between Wendy's and mcdonald's and doing uh <laughs> flame attacks against each other uh that's future of market wars um but, but we're coming now. here to uh a wrap soon do you have any <laughs> uh, last points you want to make for minarchism or anything uh you want to point out no <laughs> 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 I, still don't agree. Like, I still have the problem with you piece. saying that there you know these private military forces are they're, they're, no they're not military for- i gotta stop saying military forces these private Militia. Mil- no, no, militia. Security. Militias. Yeah. Yeah. They're just private, like, like militias. a security guard. They're almost security guards. I mean, they're not, it's not real war. What's the difference between a security guard and a soldier? Like, an Piece actual- of metal. The, right? Or, yeah. I don't know the, what it is. That, I mean, the, the, the costume. <laughs> You think one's more efficient because all my son, all of a sudden I wear a green costume. You wore a military uniform yourself. Are you proficient in the firearms? But I was an electrician. 
Are you proficient in firearms? No. Being in the military? Yeah, but I never. I, that so was, it doesn't mean that, that was my role exactly. So it doesn't mean exactly that you're going to be a proficient killer or anything like that. There's a lot of different roles in the market. My point was that the market, even if it, even despite the market production of security, uh, there are people who will volunteer. The United States has a history of people volunteering to provide that defense. Yeah, but it's not going to stop. Like we're, we're talking about war. Like wars aren't just going to stop because one side's run out of money. I mean, once one war is going to end when one side is destroyed. Well, that, that's the whole issue of the Fed, which you obviously agree on, is the you know the printing of money and the ability of the state to keep the engine of war going with this bogus currency that it creates, yeah. that and in this bogus debt that it creates. Okay, well, obviously that that is one of the problems I see. I see that's why I'm, one of the reasons I'm, leaving, I'm trying to move out the country. Like I think when the the Ponzi scheme collapses and you know everyone sees these fiat currencies going into smoke and fire, I mean I think. We're, we're going to get destroyed. I think the, all the countries that we stole all their wealth from, all their prosperity, all their freedom, they're going to come to us and they're going to, they're going to kill us. <laughs> yeah. I think they're 100% going to kill us. And we're not going to beat these people because it's going to be us versus the entire planet because we've destroyed the entire planet. Malong Lob. <laughs> 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 we're going to be destroyed. We're going to be very, I think it's going to be Lambe. I think it's going to be bad. No. <laughs> it's, gonna be, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's funny but it's like it, it's gonna be bad yeah it's gonna be really bad i will look forward to that um i do look forward to it but thanks for talking about <laughs> minarchism rest at least it's good to know at least uh in taxation minarchism you said it'd be voluntary yeah i wouldn't call that taxation at that point I'd call know, in, that, I'm, I'm gonna just you know i'm gonna say in, in some exceptions only in war that's the only exception whereas you know at some point i'm gonna be like you know what i have to break some of my philosophical consistency you know, I don't want to be sent called a hypocrite. <laughs> I, I know that's what someone's going to do. But yeah, pretty much it. All right, cool. Well, thanks so much, Russ. Uh, with that, those listening, stay liberated. And get off my property. <laughs> <laughs>